So you wanna build your own PWM? I think you came to the right spot. So today I just wanted to walk through some of the items that I've been using to build my PWM. And, and what I've been building are a PW is a PWM with a wired remote control. So my wired remote control has been having uh, the voltage display in it. You have your power switch and your forward reverse switch. So on that, I extend these wires. This one's roughly six foot long and this one's actually for me, and it will go from where my battery box is in the front of my kayak to roughly about here. So I want it extra so I can pull it through the hall because I'm going to have it nice and clean in there. So some of the things that I've been using to build this controller is on Amazon. You can get these nice little black boxes. It's about, it's about a... Uh, two and a half or two inch box by about a four inch box and I've been cutting out all those displays with a reciprocating saw and a razor blade to clean it up on the wire that I use I found a nice eight wire actually it's nine because it has a ground in there as well so I'm using that ground wire as a, a ground wire for my voltage meter. And then I just run a separate, this is a 20 gauge wire from the positive side of the battery to my voltmeter to get my, my battery voltage. On that wire, I have this nylon loom that I found. This is a half inch, half inch loom. And I got a roll of about a hundred foot here. And so what I've been doing today is clipping all the wires, resoldering and heat shrinking them back together. I'm almost done with this, uh, the bottom portion that will go into my PD PWM controller box or pulse with modulation box. I'm also using a variety of heat shrinks that you can get, both black and red, in my boxes to help waterproof them. I've been using these gland nuts. I have a, a box of different sizes. The ones I use a majority of is the PG, PG9 and PG11s. And I showed you the small box for the controller, the larger box that I use for the actual PWM and install that in. Looks something like this. When I drill the holes, put the gland nuts in, run my 10 gauge wires for the trolling motors and I put my, my circuit breaker on the outside. I do prefer the manual trip one so I can kill power to the whole system and not have to worry about power turning on when I don't want it to and overheat my motor or anything like that. So uh, the, the nine PG9 gland nuts I use in the front and the PG11 I use in the rear. The reason I use the PG11 gland nut in the rear is so when I finish my remote control wire, I will be able to run all this back through that and uh, it will all fit inside of that gland nut and I'll be able to make that look, look nice and neat all the way through. So I can feed this back through my hull, inside of the hull and back to the battery where my PWM is. Some other things that you'll need, obviously wire strippers, you're typically gonna work with, with 20 to 24 gauge wire. What I showed you earlier, I was soldering. You want your solder gun and you also want a solder that is a fine electrical solder. And this one has resin in it, which there's a little bit of resin on the inside of it. That just helps it take, take into the wires a lot more efficiently. I do have a wet sponge here. Critical part of soldering is keeping that tip 
clean. So as soon as you get done soldering and that solder gun is still hot, go ahead and wipe that off and it'll take that solder right off of there so it'll be good as new when you go to use it again. Heat gun for all your heat shrink and uh, you can use a lighter, which works just as well, um, but a heat gun just seems to work a little bit better. Uh, I do use this to clean up the frayed ends of my wire loom. And the heart of a PWM build is the PWM itself. This one here costs roughly about $60 on Amazon. PWMs are not created equal. I have found in all my testing and the ones that I have built for people that I'm only gonna trust the one that does have the fan in it to help keep it cool. This is a 100 amp uh, controller. So uh, with a um, consistent amperage of 60 amps. So most trolling motors won't pull over that so I, I don't have any fear if it does, there's a built-in fan in here. Why I say all, all PWMs are not created equal is I see on Facebook posts a lot, oh, just get an $18 one uh, off of Amazon. Well, here's an $18 one that lasted about 30 minutes uh, before it, it overheated on me and uh, kept me from using it the first time I went out. So very upsetting. So I'd recommend spending the money right away, get a good PWM, and uh, I don't think you'll have any issues with it. So I do put my PWM in the waterproof box, but I do have it up in my waterproof hatch on the front of my yak with, with the battery uh, all in the front hatch. So the other things that you'll want, 10 gauge wire, I, I say I wouldn't go anything smaller than 10 gauge all the way through. Just depends on how far you're taking that trolling motor to the back of your kayak and uh, where you're running that wire to. Um, eight gauge, if you're running the full length, I would recommend eight gauge all the way through. But um, as I was showing here on, on the stock PWM, you do get a little switch here, forward reverse switch and uh, your pulse width modulation knob, which uh, controls your speed variation. So one thing I wanna point out here is even though all these look the same, the wiring is not the same on all of them. They'll be in different places, but they'll still have two three wires and one two wire. So just be cautious of that if you kept your wiring and switching out a uh, controller. Um, if you plug it in and you had a cheaper one before and you go to get this one, if you have it off, it'll actually be all the way on when you go to turn it on. So you could have issues right off the start if you don't recognize that. One other thing I do on my, my builds that I've been doing is uh, this more expensive PWM does come with a smaller forward reverse switch. So I have found the switches that are a little bit bigger and installing those in their place. Just gives you a little bit something bigger to grab there. Um, and everybody wants to know how do I have it, how do I have it on the rail of my kayak? I do have a one inch ram ball top and bottom and then the uh, size B four inch arm is what I use to uh, adapt that to it. So um, it's nice to have it right there. I will say the thing that I've realized with having this system is it is completely hands-free as long as you're using your feet for steering. You know, you turn this on, you get going. If you're trolling um, or into the wind, you can set this at the speed that you need to hold you in the spot and then just steer with your feet. Um, I've, I've actually absolutely loved this. Initially, I really wanted a hand remote so I didn't have to run any wiring, anything like that from, from the uh, trolling motor, but I'm glad I went this way because a controller or a remote controller, you have to wait for speed adjust, you have a lag in steering, where this is very quick, very precise, and, uh, and all hands-free once you get it dialed to where you want it. So. Again, I uh, went over a lot of information here. I probably missed some things. Uh, I am working on adding an amp meter uh, to another, another person's 
This one's a little big, so I actually ordered a different one to fit into this box. He wanted to be able to utilize this box. So um, I think it's very important to have some type of, of battery or amperage display just to show you where you're at. Um, using lithium batteries is a little less um, needed as a lead acid battery. Lead acid battery will show that you still have voltage left, but you know, you'll learn your spot where, where that trolling motor will stop working on you. So all in all, yes, it sounds very inexpensive to build one of these, but by the time you get all these components and, and build this yourself and the time it takes to build it and to learn from the mistakes, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, one other thing that, that I utilize that's, that's critical in this build, um, obviously the drill, uh, but these um, tapered uh, bits, these tapered bits are very nice for when you're drilling out for all your glam nuts. Uh, this goes up to seven eighths here. So it's small, starts as a very small hole and it builds up and uh, allows you to get it just to the point where you can screw in these glam nuts. And, uh, and it just makes everything a lot cleaner, a lot neater. So um, I'd be happy to build one of these for you. I have customized it and I can customize it however you want it. Um, I can install some more fans in there for you, which I'm gonna do as well. Um, I have little fans that I can install in the components. So uh, again, I'm happy to do anything I can to help you out. If you have any questions, leave them down in, in the comment section. Please subscribe. I'm gonna be going over a lot more things. My kayak is completely destroyed at this point uh, with projects, so I have more things coming. If you're interested in DIY kayak builds, I hope we can be friends in the future. Anyway, subscribe, like, comment. I'd be glad to help. Have a great day.